we'll dive in straight to the last presenters, uh, the two, uh, Brian von Hazen and Laura Talsma. They are both from Climate Foundation and will uh, tell us about community scale facilities to process feces and fecal sludge into safety voucher by pyrolysis. So I don't know how you manage this, uh, both of you, but please go ahead. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nelson. I'll, and then uh, and Laura will follow up as well. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm Brian von Herzen from the Climate Foundation, and would like to talk with you today about our community scale pr facility to uh, process feces into biochar using our biochar reactor through pyrolysis. The first slide that you're looking at is a uh, sketch of the value chain as it goes through the system. In particular, we are partnered with Sanergy in Nairobi. We've depicted uh, sanitation units similar to the Sanergy sanitation units deployed in Mukuru and other uh, slums in Nairobi. And these units are operated on an entrepreneurial basis. They uh, collect approximately, uh, I believe it's, you know, a nickel per use per day, something of that sort per person. In, term, in terms of the collection fees. And from that perspective, um, they're able to uh, process and service these units daily. Uh, Synergy has a sustainable model that enables uh, daily collection and replacement of 30 liter chemical canisters that uh, separate, uh, they, they transport the urine and the feces uh, separately, and they use urine diverting dry toilets with squat plates. That enables the separate processing of urine and feces in the neighborhood processing center. Uh, the neighborhood processing center typically uh, has a transport distance of 300 to a, perhaps at most 500 meters, and thus it becomes practical to do this manually using carts and wheelbarrows and uh, some motorized devices as well as an option. And in the center of this slide is depicted our animation, if you will, or sketch of the overall process. The uh, input material has a moisture level that approximates 75 percent moisture and that's due to uh, the, the raw um, feces moisture level of 80 percent coupled with some additional incidental solid waste such as toilet paper or uh, for example um, sawdust which is used as a cover material in the Synergy sanitation process. That material goes through a belt drying system depicted in orange, and it travels from right to left into an auger feed system. The auger feed goes, in, goes into a uh, carbonizer unit. The carbonizer, carbonizer unit Uh, takes material at approximately 30 percent moisture and it pyrolyzes it at a temperature of 300 to 700 Celsius whereupon it actually produces biochar, a variable amount of biochar depending on moisture level, heat and pyrolysis gases. The pyrolysis gases pass through a, uh, a catalytic, catalytic converter and that converter does lean burn uh, um, uh, oxidation. That oxidation process releases the remaining energy and completes the uh, process of oxidation so that there are no partial combustion products left in this pipeline. Uh, yeah. After that process, biochar is collected and it's uh, uh, cooled and then combined with compost and other material to provide a uh, fertilizer substrate. That fertilizer substrate can be inoculated with uh, biocompost. It can also be have nutrients added to it, whereupon it uh, can be provided as a fertilizer or crop soil amendment, and that's uh, one of the main business models that this energy has been developing. So that's an overview of it. The next slide actually describes our technology. We're focused on the biochar reactor itself, which comprises drying and pyrolysis with a cost objective of less than a nickel per person per day. We uh, plan to not utilize any net external power uh, requirements, and that's met the main energy source is coming from the caloric value of the feces itself, which is on a dry basis exceeding 
20 megajoules per kilogram of dry material. We wish to uh, understand the optimal conversion process in terms of temperature, time, and the um, most favorable end products, particularly for agriculture. And uh, it's our objective, in addition to research and develop these markets for both biochar and other end products in East Africa in Nairobi. With that, I'll hand it over to Laura Talsma, uh, who's also with the Climate Foundation and can discuss this sanitation value chain. Laura? Yes, thank you, Brian. Yeah, here we just wanted to show, as we're talking about the missing links in the value chain, we wanted to show the, the sanitation value chain as we um, envision it for our future. Um, we're working on a community scale, so we're collaborating with community scale waste infrastructures, such as Sanergy at the moment in, in Kenya. Uh, as you can see on the, the left-hand corner, Sanergy is using uh, toilets in the slums um, their waste is being collected separately and brought uh, to a, a waste collection site. Uh, we, could, we can plug in our system there. It's a containerized solution um, which could be plugged in pretty much to any human waste uh, infrastructure um, that's, that's uh, separating their, uh, their waste streams. Um, after being processed by our uh, uh, biochar reactor, the end product, uh, biochar augmented with the nutrients from, from urine, can be either used as a fertilizer substrate to help agriculture in the region or as briquettes to be used in the, in the slums or in the area around the, the waste uh, collection site. And in that way, uh, we're sort of closing the circle, uh, not to be too graphic about it, by uh, producing more food and uh, eventually it ends up uh, where we started. So with this, we actually try to plug in to existing waste infrastructures and um, by producing valuable end products, in that way we want to augment the current sanitation value change. Our system, um, as it currently works, uh, Brian already presented it to you briefly, but here to, to put it a bit more graphic, um, to the left-hand corner of the image, there's, um, in this case, 100 kilos of Sanergy solid waste going into the system. Uh, it gets dried on a belt drying system. It's very energy efficient, so we don't lose too much energy drying it. Uh, after that, the carbonizer um, brings this uh, human waste up to a, a high temperature which sanitizes it completely and chars it into biochar which you can see coming out of the system on the left hand corner. From 100 kilos of uh, dry human waste or separated human waste we get uh, around 7 kilos of biochar and this same biochar can also be used to start up the system um, from, from scratch. Uh, then we have a couple of very interesting systems that help us uh, tip our energy balance in our favor, as we call it. We have a Stirling engine using the heat of the carbonizer to produce electric energy to power our uh, a belt drying system. And we have a, a heat recapturing system which uses the heat of the carbonizer to um, dry the waste uh, in our belt drying system. Also, we're using our own biochar in odor filters on top of the roof to um, clean the air, uh, as we call it, um, passively. So it can, it's actually safe and um, non-odorous to use in the middle of a slum. For the next slide, I'm passing it on to Brian again. Yes, just following up on <clears throat> one of the comments that Laura made, the the, vape, the heat of condensation is actually recaptured in the exhaust stream and in particular we're using a spray of water in that vertical column to recapture the moisture from condensation uh, in the exhaust and also to uh, clean the exhaust. So this scrubbing type system has two functions. It actually cleans the exhaust from the reactor and it also collects the heat from the reactor and pipes that into the drying system. As you can see on the left-hand side, the very dark red plane above the actual belt 
is a radiator and warm air air passes through this radiator where it's warmed and then it passes through the belt surface itself. Uh, this re heat recovery we think is very important for high moisture content uh, input materials because uh, recovering that heat of condensation can significantly add to the efficiency of the overall process. As Laura stated, um, we start with around 100 kilograms of feces of that, we get approximately uh, 36 kilograms coming out of the dryer. That's about 25 kilograms per hour on a dry, purely dry basis. And roughly half of that is carbon, so about 12 kilograms. And uh, less than uh, seven or less uh, kilograms per hour can be produced in the biochar level, depending on the input moisture content and the energy requirements that are needed to uh, reach equilibrium. Short summary, here's a picture of the uh, yeah. Foundation uh, reinvent the toilet chair. Uh, we actually had the system running last month in New Delhi, India. Um, these are some of the agricultural benefits that uh, Laura can speak to in the question and answer period, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, follow up as needed. And the result so far is that we have the subsystems characterized, and we're doing testing in Bangalore, India, followed by Nairobi. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. We, we return to all these at, uh, during the discussion. And, and Mutala, you have some questions there. Yeah, uh, Brian, thank you for the presentation. I uh, want to ask, have you really considered in terms of scaling up of the project, the social aspect in terms of acceptance of the products, I mean, by the society? Yes, that's a very good question. Thank you. One of the very early approaches that are being used at Sanergy is actually to have their compost material go to crops such as uh, cotton and flowers that are being uh, utilized broadly in Kenya. So this is a, a simple way to uh, provide compost quickly with, with reduced risk. In addition, there's been work on providing, providing uh, these nutrients to uh, tree, tree crops that again utilize the nutrients but is relatively safe. That's on a composting basis. Now, the, the char itself is actually uh, been sterilized. So we need to establish the market vibe further for food crops. But from a uh, sanitation perspective, we have a high degree of confidence of a pathogen-free system. Thank you. Yep, thanks, uh, Brian. Any further questions? There was one question, Brian, uh, um, from uh, Mark. The um, okay. energy we're expecting from the Sterling engine. I think that's a good question for you to answer. Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to. So the Sterling engines average on the order of 18 to 20% efficiency. And so we input on the order of uh, up to 45 or 50 kilowatts into a Sterling engine. That's thermal energy. The output then can be approaching uh, even 10 kilowatts in the best case scenario. And in that sense, that's 10 kilowatts of electricity that's available for running our system. We're actually expecting it to be significantly less than 10 kilowatts going forward. And that would leave a potential surplus of electrical power for others. There have been a number of questions on where the power for this whole system comes from and how do we start it up. Keep in mind that biochar is a high quality form of charcoal and charcoal is used very commonly in barbecues, et cetera. So from that perspective, the biochar that we store and reserve at our operational site is a great energy source for actually getting the reaction up to temperature each day. And so from that perspective, our store of biochar not only provides a very good starting energy source for the system, it also, of course, provides filtration for any kind of odor filtration or even water filtration requirements that may, may be needed. So from that perspective, we're able to um, have a net surplus of electricity and, in fact, a net thermal surplus based on the measured 21 to 23 megajoules per kilogram from the Sanergy solid input stream. Thank you. Elizabeth, okay, you have something? Yeah, um, there's also lots of questions in the chat. So it's all really interesting. but. Um, let me just ask one more question verbally. Um, I find it interesting that you chose to work specifically with Sanergy, who are using these urine-diverting dry toilets. So unlike 
the toilets we were talking about with Francis, which produces wet sludge, where the Sanaji toilets produce this dry material, which is very interesting and um, suits your process. I'm just wondering, did you match your process with their operations, or did you first come up with your process and then find someone who produces exactly that kind of drier input that you your process would, would take? We started right at the beginning, uh, thank you Elizabeth, uh, with Sanergy. Uh, that was inspiration for our development model. From that perspective, if, if we want to address the, the uh, issues of solid waste sanitation from a pyrolysis perspective, it fundamentally is a moisture problem. And from that perspective, the urine diverting dry toilet is a nearly ideal solution. We like to, uh, we like to say, why would you want to add water to a moisture problem? And in that sense, the urine diverting dry toilet makes a lot of sense from the energetic uh, thermodynamic standpoint, as well as from the nutrient conservation standpoint. We feel that in terms of maximizing the nutrients that are available, when possible, a urine diverting dry toilet enables efficient capture of the nitrogen available in urine, as well as the, of course, phosphorus and potassium, while at the same time addressing the pathogenic issues uh, related to the feces in a very robust thermal way. And so from that perspective, we see the urine diverting dry toilet as having strong benefits, and we're very interested in understanding how to develop the urine diverting toilet in, in the context of uh, washing as well as wiping. And we think that's a distinct opportunity, and we're open to collaboration in that area. We'd be happy to talk with people uh, regarding those questions as well. Thank you, Brian.